Let's get a check now of the top business news stories here on France 24. Our business editor, Kate Moody, joins me. Hi, Kate. Hi, Tom. America's central bank raising interest rates, all part of a bid to contain and to combat inflation. Yeah, a half percentage point move. It's the first time that's happened since the year 2000. The move brings the target for the federal funds rate to between three quarters and one percent. It had been slashed close to zero at the start of the pandemic to spur spending and boost economic activity. Low rates give buyers more spending power, while higher rates encourage consumers to save rather than spend. The Fed usually moves at a slower pace with quarter percentage point shifts, but it has faced pressure to be more aggressive because inflation is the highest it's been in 40 years. Consumer prices soared 8.5% in March. The core inflation rate, which the Fed watches because it removes volatile food and energy prices, was still over 5%. The central bank's target is 2%. Take a listen to the Fed Chairman, Jerome Powell. Inflation is much too high, and we understand the hardship it is causing, and we're moving expeditiously to bring it back down. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. The economy and the country have been through a lot over the past two years and have proved resilient. It is essential that we bring inflation down if we are to have a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. For more, let's speak to Thomas Kosterg, senior economist at Pictet Wealth Management. Thanks for being with us on France 24. Good evening. Uh, Jerome Powell there saying that more half percentage point rate hikes will be on the table at the central bank's next meetings. Will that be enough, do you think, to get a handle on inflation? Right. I, I think it will indeed slow uh, the economy. And I think the first sector to slow will be the housing market. We've seen interest rates, uh, you know, mortgage interest rates going uh, up to around 5.5 percent. So we've already priced in a very aggressive tightening from the Federal Reserve. We, we're going to see the impact on the housing market, potentially on business sentiment as well. Yeah, I think the economy may slow, and it's probably what what is needed right now. There is too much demand and not enough supply in the U.S., and that's why you get inflation. Now, the risk is that the economy slows too much. And as Jerome Powell said tonight, uh, there are a lot of challenges with this monetary tightening. But I think the Fed uh, confirmed and really, uh, you know, reaffirm that it, it, it will st still stay quite sensitive about the economy. So, yes, it's combating inflation, but down the line, it will continue to listen to the, to the, to the, you know, the, the economic signals uh, as well. So it will be a balancing act. Concretely, can you remind us what these higher interest rates mean for American consumers and households? Right. So, uh, first of all, in terms of the impacts uh, on the housing market, I think that's where the, 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 the quickest impact is. Uh, you, we are already seeing the mortgage rate um, so going, uh, you know, um, going up quite sharply. And by the way, you already seeing signs that the housing market it may be slowing, which is actually a healthy thing because the, the housing market to some degree in the U.S. was already, you know, I mean, maybe too hot. Now, the, the, second, uh, uh, the second sector to watch will be uh, business investment. Uh, there is a, 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 you know, an increase in, in funding costs that may uh, affect uh, business investment. Uh, and also the third sector is obviously financial conditions in general and the stock market. Uh, and that may also uh, influence uh, the mood and sentiment of consumers. So that will be the third uh, channel to watch. Now, the Federal Reserve is also paring back other pandemic era support for the economy. It's going to start reducing its balance sheet in June by about $47.5 billion per month through August. Uh, can you explain the significance of that move? Well, it's quite simple. The balance sheet of the Fed is now almost $9 trillion. It's just a massive balance sheet. The Fed has been very aggressive in buying treasuries uh, during COVID. So there's been a massive injection of liquidity. And the, the, I, I will say this, the Fed is only going to slowly remove uh, this liquidity. Uh, the maximum cap will be $95 billion per month. So it means that uh, they will roughly reduce the balance sheet by one trillion a year. So as you can see, it may take a while for really this balance sheet to go uh, to go down. Actually, I would say the balance sheet is the area where the Fed is the most cautious on. They are much more aggressive on rate hikes.
Uh, the U.S. labor market is also very tight at the moment. Unemployment is at 3.6 percent, but the number of jobs openings has hit a record high. Um, how does that factor into the Fed's decision making? The Fed is really worried about a wage price spiral. So the fact that you know wages could could go up and then inflation expectations start to build and we are in an inflation scenario like we got in the 1970s. So the Fed is really watching uh, wage growth. Uh, Jerome Powell believes that um, you know the monetary tightening can affect job vacancies, uh, but not the labor market itself. Uh, and so he has said that there is a narrow path where you can uh, you know bring down vacancies but the labor market can stay strong and just enough for wage growth uh, to go back uh, down um, to be consistent with the 2% inflation target. Uh, we will see because uh, monetary tightening can, can, can be a blunt instrument uh, for the economy and for the labor market. So uh, it, it's, as Jerome Powell said, it's, it's going to be challenging. Thomas, just briefly, the U.S. is not alone in facing soaring inflation. It's the case in the eurozone as well. Uh, do you expect the European Central Bank to take similar measures? Right. So first of all, in the U.S., a fiscal stimulus was much more, much bigger. So the inflation problem there, I think, is more complicated than in Europe. But indeed, in Europe, there's also an inflation problem, which is more linked to commodity prices. But I think, yeah, the European Central Bank has said that, you know, tightening is on the table. Uh, and it may start uh, soon. Uh, and I would also say that uh, interest rates in the Europe is, are actually much lower than in the U.S. They're actually negative. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, I think um, the ECB is preparing the ground uh, to start hiking interest rates quite soon. That will depend also on the outlook for wages, for inflation, and also in Europe, especially in Europe, the geopolitical risks. All right, Thomas Kosterg, thank you so much for speaking to us on France thank 24 you. this evening. Let's check in quickly on the day's trading action now. Wall Street has rallied from a rather muted start, uh, gains of around 1.7% uh, across the board, a bit more now at 1.8 actually. Few surprises from the Fed, so this move has really been priced in for several weeks there. Uh, the major European indices closed in the red, saw the CAC 40 down about one and a quarter percentage points in Paris. Retail sales in the Eurozone fell in March, squeezed by rising inflation and lower consumer confidence. Tom, that's all the business news for now. Thank you very much indeed. Our business editor, Kate Moody. Thank you.